How's it going? Ryan here at eTrailer.com. Today on our 2016 Chevrolet Silverado 1500, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the eTrailer.com Class 4 trailer hitch receiver. Now right off the bat, one of the main things that separates this hitch from many of the others out there is its finish. It's going to be a matte black carbide finish, which is very scratch resistant, rust resistant, and it's going to stay looking good for a long time. This is going to be a great choice if your truck doesn't have a hitch at all, or if the current one you have is rusty or beat up, or if the one currently on your truck doesn't meet your weight capacity needs. This truck's a perfect example on how this is going to make your life a little bit easier. Now he's going to be able to take all his equipment out of the bed of the truck, maybe throw it on a trailer, free up some space and make it easier to get to. And on the weekend, if he wants to take his boat down to the river, he's going to have no problem doing that. Now, this is going to give us some pretty good clearance too. What I mean by that, the end of the hitch is going to sit about flush with our bumper. So if you do happen to want to use some folding accessories, you're not going to have any problem doing that. Now this is a class four hitch. So we're going to have that two inch by two inch receiver tube opening and a reinforced collar for extra strength. It's going to have the standard size 5 8 pinhole. Now a pin and clip is not included, but if you need one, you can find it here at eTrailer. Well, safety chain loops aren't going to be huge, but they are going to give us enough room to use just about any size hook that you might have. Now as far as the hitch's weight capacities go, it's going to have a thousand pound maximum tongue weight rating. That's going to be the amount of weight pushing down on the hitch. So that's going to be more than enough for just about any accessory that you'd want to use. Now as far as the maximum gross trailer weight rating goes, that's going to be 10,000 pounds or the amount of weight pulling on the hitch. So that's the weight of your trailer plus anything you might have on it. Now it can be used with the weight distribution system, which is a separate component. But if you are using one of those, the weight capacities do increase. The maximum tongue weight rating goes up to 1,200 pounds, and the maximum gross trailer weight rating is up to 12,000 pounds. Now I do recommend checking with your Silverado's owner's manual to make sure your truck can pull out much weight. Now I'm going to give you a couple of measurements, and you're going to use these to help figure out which hitch mount accessories to get. From the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening, it's going to be about 17 inches. And you're going to use that to figure out if you need to get a ball mount with either a drop or a rise. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of the rear bumper, it's going to be about three inches. And you're going to use that to help figure out if any folding accessories you might have can be stored in the upright position without contacting the bumper. Now, as far as the installation goes, it's relatively straightforward. And you should have no problem getting it done at home. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and put it on together now. To begin our installation, we're going to want to lower our spare tire to give us a little more room to work. So to do that, you'd open up your cap, take your key, pull out the lock cylinder, and then we can go up front and grab our spare tire tools and get it lowered. Now here underneath the truck, we're going to come to our frame rail and we're going to have two factory hardware that we need to remove. We're going to have a bolt here and a stud with a nut on it. So I'm going to use a 21 millimeter socket and wrench to remove this nut. Then I'm just going to use R21 to pull this bolt out. And if that nut does break free up top, just grab your wrench to hold it in place. Now the other side is set up the same way, so we'll just repeat that process over there. So now with the next set of hands, we'll grab our hitch and line up all the holes. Once we have it in place, we can use that factory hardware we just removed to secure it. It's a good idea to get one started on each side. That way the hitch will support itself while we work on the rest of the hardware. Now once the hardware is in place, we can go ahead and snug it down. Now what we're going to do is work on these two attachment points. Now 
how these work is we're going to take the large flat washer that's included and these are going to slide in between the top of the hitch and the bottom of the frame and pull that down slide those in now whenever you tighten up the hitch earlier if it draw it too tight to the frame and didn't have enough space to get your washer in between you may have to loosen those bolts up just a little bit to be able to sneak that washer in but the majority of the time that's something you're probably not going to need to do now with those washers lining up with the hitch in the frame we're going to take our spacer block and a carriage bolt put those two together and then we're going to come from the top and drop that down through the frame, the washer, and the hitch. I use that same hardware combination for that one as well. And on the bottom side, we're going to secure both of them using a flange knife. Now we're able to go ahead and snug down the remaining hardware. Now we can go ahead and use a torque wrench to tighten all of our hardware down, the specification found in the instructions. Something I do just want to point out, as you can see, our spare tire is going to have no problem fitting with our hitch in place. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation, the Trailer.com Class 4 Trailer Hitch Receiver on our 2016 Chevrolet Silverado 1500.